Hello everybody. So here's what we're going to do today. We are going to make a scheduler. So imagine you're going to a landing page and you've got a date and a time available for you and a schedule me button. And the next time you go to that page, the time you selected before is not available anymore. So what we're using is the Google Calendar API and it's going to allow you to basically push a date to the Google Calendar. The Calendar uh, API will push back the available times and then once you click select me, it will no longer be available. Um, and then you can just repeat, rinse and repeat. Um, in this episode, we're just going to set up our environment and then dump some data from our calendar. We're not actually going to do all of the time deconflictions, uh, but in the next episode, we're going to go ahead and finish it out. The first time you ever use this, what's going to happen is there will be no credentials in your web server because you're using a website to access Google Calendar. There needs to be some trust there. And in order to do that, there are credentials involved. Um, if you've never done anything like this before, I've got a couple other tutorials with uh, Google Sheets, actually, that will kind of explain that relationship a little bit better. But um, in this case, you, you'll see this the first time. Once you click this link, what will happen is it will redirect, or it'll open up a page that will say, it'll basically be Google saying, hey, uh, is it okay if this website accesses your calendar? Yes or no? If you say yes, you trust the website, then it'll take you to this page. After that first time of doing this, you won't have to worry about it anymore because the credentials will, will actually be saved inside your web root or somewhere um, inside your website. And then you'll see this page every time in the future. The next thing you have to worry about is, uh, of course, what we're doing high level today. So the first is the, the three files that we're going to make. The first is connection.php. Second is calendars.php, and the third is index.php. So we're just going to get right into it. The first file, connection.php. We're going to build this file based off of a tutorial that's already out there, make a couple modifications, and then uh, move on. So this tutorial at the uh, developer's site, calendar, quick start. So go ahead and go to that link, and it'll take you here. And we're just going to run through this really quick. It doesn't take very long to do. So prerequisites, composer. So you want to go to this link copy these four lines of code, paste them into your FTP or into your uh, command line, excuse me, not FTP, into your command line at your web server, and hit enter. And then once that's done, you're going to have a composer.far file. Um, so the next thing is turn on the Google Calendar API. So at console.developers.google.com, this is the page that you're at here. So let me just go ahead and go back to the dashboard. And this is what you're going to see uh, once this pops up here in a second. Um, if you've never created a project here, you're going to want to do that now. So up at the top left, you'll just click this drop down, click the plus sign, create a project, save it, call it whatever you want. I've got one called read data, so I'm not going to create it again. Um, once you create your project, this page is going to come up. The next thing you will do is you will, of course, enable the calendars API library. So just type in calendar, click this, and then here it'll say enable. Uh, mine just says manage because I've already got it enabled, but if you've never done it, just click enable, and then it'll refresh, and that is it. Back to the main page here. If you go to your dashboard, you'll see the uh, credentials link. You'll want to create your credentials. So here where it says calendar, I've already created one. And so I don't really need to worry about creating another one. But if you've never done this, click create credentials, OAuth client ID, web application, give it a name, mine is calendar. Restrictions, so this is whatever website you're going to be using. So mine is tutorials.dev.brunstore.com. Authorized redirect URIs is going to be the same for me because I want to redirect the user back to the same page that they began with. And essentially this is what it is. It's saying, first time you come here, show me this. After I click this link and it authorize it, redirect me back to the same page, but show me that. That's what this is doing for me. So once you save that, uh, let's go ahead and open this and show you. See it's got that and that. It'll show it on this list once you've saved it and you can download the credentials here. So go ahead and save your credentials as a JSON file into your web root as client underscore secret dot JSON. Click save. And then move it over to your web server. So here, client secret dot JSON moves over to here. 
done. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come down to the Google Client Library and install the Google Client Library. So copy that, paste, enter, and then let that run. So this will take a couple minutes, and while it's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and tell you this next par portion is pretty simple. You literally just copy all this code here, and we're going to only make a couple of changes. So copy it down to the bottom, control C, paste it into a file called connection.php. I've got a, a temporary one here called connection0.php. Um, but yeah, copy that over. And we're only going to make a couple changes. So the first change we're going to make is right here. So what this is doing is it's saying if, you, if your credentials don't exist, um, use the command line to do this stuff and get your authorized URL, copy it, paste it into the browser, copy the response, paste it back into the command line. We don't want to use the command line. We want to use the web browser for the entire thing. So we're going to get rid of these four lines and replace them with this. We're going to say if the credentials are not in the browser, create the URL and return the URL assigned to an A tag. That way you can do all of this in the website and don't have to worry about doing it in the command line. And then after that, the next time it comes through, it's going to see that the credentials are in the browser, skip over this line, and then do what else it, everything um, do everything else it has to do, pulling that code from the browser. The only other thing we're going to change here um, is this credentials in browser function did not exist, of course, so we are creating that ourselves. And all it's doing is it's testing to see if code is set or not. If it's set, return true. If it's not set, return false. So we've created this. So just to recap, replace the command line references with that, and then create this function down here, and then have your auth code equals get code. Once that's done, connection.php should be good to go. You'll be able to create your index.php file next. So create your index file, reference the jQuery library, we're going to use that in, as part of the document ready function. Require the connection.php, which we've just created. And then here we're going to say if we do not have a client, meaning if the file doesn't exist in our web root, um, the file being the credentials, then echo this. Otherwise, if we do have a client, echo that. That's what this is doing here. So echo the a, the a tag, otherwise echo everything else. So here we've got our date, here we've got our time, here we've got our button. I've created this p tag because this is as far as we're going to go for this episode. We're going to actually just dump out whatever's in our calendar and that's it. And we're going to dump it inside of this tag. Um, and then in the future episodes, we're going to go ahead and work out our time deconfliction and all that stuff. Here we've got our script, JavaScript, Ajax calls. Um, if you've never used an AJAX call or if you've never used the XML, specifically HTTP request, then you're going to learn today. So this is my AJ or I'm sorry, this is my jQuery. And then here we're setting some event listeners. Once I change the date, then get the times. Once I click the submit button, then schedule me. This will not work after this episode because we're not going to finish it. It will happen the next episode. Um, this is not actually going to get the times, it's just going to dump the data, but it's going to do something. So here's the function implementation, get times. We're passing in the instance of available dates here, and then we're going to reference the date here and then pass that into our um, AJAX call right here. Get is what we're using, we're saying calendar.php is the file we're calling. Action is going to be get times. So let's go ahead and create this calendars file. We're going to create this get times function. And it'll be cool because you'll see how we're, we're going to make this dynamic. So any action we pass in happen will happen to be the function that we call. Um, and then that's it. So calendars.php is right here. Up at the top, we've got a a test. Basically we're saying if this is an XML HTTP request from our site, then include the connection 
and then call the function that is the action. So recall, index.php says action equals get times. So our action in calendars.php equals get times, all right? So this is actually replaced with get times, and then this is saying this is the function that we're calling. That allows it to be dynamic. So this function returns a string, and then we echo that string out to the browser back to the user. So that's how that works. All of this here is literally a copy-paste with a couple minor changes. So we're copying this from our connection file. This is the last change we'll make here. Starting at client equals get client all the way to the bottom. This is where the magic happens. So everything above this is just our function declarations uh, or definitions. Everything below this is actually creating an instance of the classes um, and everything. Listing our events, displaying to the screen. But we don't, <clears throat> excuse me, we don't want to display stuff to the screen with this. We just want to, uh, or with this file. We just want to define the functions. So take this code, cut it, paste it over into the get times function, and then replace the CLI references with HTML references. So just take a look at it here. We've got a CLI reference here. Print no upcoming events found. Print upcoming events. Print F. Replace those with HTML dot equals event dot get summary. HTML equals no upcoming events found, and then return whatever you've decided to save. You can return whatever you want, but in this case, we're only returning the summary to the file that called it. Now recall, the file that called it, called calendars.php, is here, returns it here, and then echoes it back to index.php. Once it echoes back, it's going to display it. It's going to say, document.getElement uh, by ID dump, which is our p tag, into the inner HTML uh, response, and that's it. So let's test this out. We're running a little bit low on time, so we'll try to get this done pretty quick here. So we'll move our client secret over. We'll move over our index. We'll move over our calendars.php. We'll move over our connection. And once all of that's done, we should have a working site. So now we'll just go to tutorials.dev.brunstar.com. The first time we used it, so you can see, click here to link. We've clicked it. We're going to use whatever one you want to use. Now you can see the date pickers there. We're saying whatever. So now it says no upcoming events found. So that's actually a return from my calendar right now because I've got nothing going on. Let me go into my calendar and I'll schedule an event really quick just to show you how this works. Um, I will go into the next day, April 1st. Oh my goodness, what just happened? Where's my calendar? Right there. All right, so we will go into April 1st, and we will create an event. Let's go ahead and call it test event one. Save it, and then we will refresh the page here. We'll pick a date, boom. See, this is test event one. So we literally just pulled from my calendar and showed that I have an event there. Now imagine all the things that we can do with this, because if I have more, It'll list out more. And eventually, instead of listing out the events in my page, I'm going to figure out what times these events start and display those available times in this drop down right here, which doesn't happen to do anything right now, but it will in future, future episodes. So that is all that we're going to go over in this episode. Um, try to keep it as simple as possible. And if you have any comments, questions, anything you want me to point out in the next video for more clarification, feel free to post a comment below. Please subscribe um, because you know it'll it'll help get the word out that we're we're doing some fun things here. So that is all for today, and have a good day. Thanks, guys. Bye.